Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar from for the latest UKV have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we are in a fairly unsettled spell not horrific not stormy or anything terrible like that but generally a lot more unsettled in the first half of April we are in a bit of a lull today in between weather systems so for most this Easter Sunday is pretty dry which is a good thing However, over the next couple of days, as we'll see, it is going to get a lot more unsettled as we start to see more rain moving up from the south and the southwest. Alongside that, temperatures are probably going to be below average as well. Wherever we see the rain, probably not getting much above the single digits with a bit of sunshine, maybe still into the mid-teens. But of course, later on this week, with more and more cloud and rain, that will become increasingly more isolated. As we progress into the longer range, kind of towards the final few days of April into early May, that does look likely to see high pressure as more of a feature across the British Isles. However, the capacity of that high pressure, where it positions itself, is going to make all the difference. Now, as we'll see from the main operational runs, they all build high pressure in and around the UK but all doing it in a slightly different position, slightly different strength and orientation, all giving slightly different outcomes. GFS has a bit of a cutoff low developing, so something similar to what we've seen the last few days and what we're going to see in the next few days, potentially very wet in the south. The GM is a little bit drier with more high pressure dominating. Actually, it doesn't look too bad at all. And the ECMWF has the high pressure further westward, which allows northerly or northeasterly flows, keeping it unsettled, but more importantly, much, much colder. All of those scenarios still on the table, and we'll explore those in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you start on the live radar, as I said, it is a much drier day today. We're recording this around the middle of the afternoon, around half three. And it's looking fairly pleasant out there. Lots of sunshine around this morning, a bit more in the way of cloud, especially across the far southeast. We've got a bit of drizzle and further westwards. But in between, we have got a dry slot and there is plenty of pleasant conditions the rain, though, that is going to be arriving over the coming hours and the next couple of days already starting to make an appearance across the far southwest of the Republic of Ireland. And that is going to progressively push in over the coming hours. Now, you can see for much of the UK, it's actually pretty pleasant this afternoon. Temperatures around the mid-teens. As I said, with sunshine, not too bad, but this is definitely going to be more of an isolated day. The next few days, temperatures are going to be dropping quite considerably. If we look out to our east, where it is much drier, slightly warmer air masses, none of the influence of low pressure to our west, you can see it is warm temperatures into the low to mid 20s. So we're not too far away from seeing some really pleasant conditions, but unfortunately, it's just not our time. Of course, we saw all that pleasant conditions during March and April, so we were bound to be on the cooler and wetter side, and that is what is going to happen over the coming days. Now, if you look at the latest UKV, you can see through the rest of this afternoon, rain is going to become a bit more widespread across the far south and across the west. And it's slowly going to become a little bit more impactful through Monday morning. Progressively, that band of rain does kind of falter, does disintegrate away into more patchy precipitation. But elsewhere, heavy, maybe even thundery showers could pop up during the afternoon around that main band of rain. Progressively into Tuesday, it's pretty dry during the morning, but progressively during the afternoon, heavy rain arrives for the west. So the east, not too bad, but that rain will eventually arrive and you see washout conditions overnight, which is pretty fortunate. Some really heavy stuff within that. That clears into Wednesday morning and leaves behind an array of showers. And those showers continue through the rest of Wednesday and slowly into Thursday, a few odd showers around, but generally starting to see a bit of high pressure building in, perhaps signs of that pressure build into the final days of April. So that is, again, one to watch. So by the end of the week, could be a little bit drier. But again, I would still be very skeptical of that, as we see from the long range charts in a few moments time. Lots of disagreements in the positioning of the high, which will make all the difference. 
Now, if you look at the temperatures this afternoon around the mid-teens where we have got the sunshine, it's not too bad, 16, 17 degrees, around average for the time of year, maybe slightly above in a few spots. Into Monday, though, the Far East still seeing 16, 17, but further westwards and northwards with more of the cloud and rain, more towards the low teens, or maybe only the single digits. Into Tuesday morning, pretty chilly, but nothing too bad around the mid-single digits overnight. And by the afternoon, once again, the Far East, 16, 17, elsewhere, mid to low teens. Into Wednesday, pretty cool evening. Temperatures not dropping away as much, but they will feel cold out there because of all the rain. And by the afternoon, most areas struggling around the low teens once again. Into Thursday with some clearer skies, frost in the north. And by the afternoon, temperatures still chilly, mid to low teens, but recovering further southwards, maybe 16 or 17 there. And again, a potentially another frost there into Friday morning, getting to the point where these frosts are coming pretty late in the season and could be a little bit disruptive to the growing season uh, with lots of grass, plants, trees, crops starting um, to sort of got to get to that point of the year where we shouldn't really be seeing too many frosts but you can see here for the final few days of April potentially for quite a widespread frost there which isn't the best it's still not into May May is getting very late in the season we are still in April but nonetheless it is progressively becoming later and later so we'll have to wait and see but definitely some cold mornings are out uh, are a possibility later on this week but it does come along with something a bit drier, which is a bonus. Now, if you look at the latest GFS, you can see at the moment low pressure spiraling around, but we're just in between systems. That means that it's pretty dry out there. However, rain does arrive over the coming hours and it does look pretty unsettled as we head towards the middle part of the week. Eventually, a bit of high pressure builds in, but it doesn't last too long with some lows straining it from the west. And you see, eventually, out towards the last few days of April, high pressure is building in with a southerly flow, which does actually look pretty dry and warm. But we do start to see a bit of a cutoff low developing to our south into the first week there of May. And you can see it would have lots of heavy showers, bands of precipitation and thunderstorms spiraling in there for the final few frames of this run. So although it doesn't look like a massive system, it could be very impactful in the south. And although high pressure is all around us, this one low pressure system will make all the noise. So again, very much on side of high pressure building in, because you see one little pesky low to our south, and that derails the high pressure completely and keeps us very unsettled. Now, if you compare to the GM, as I said, it is a bit of a dry run. Low pressure moving through over the coming days, eventually some high pressure building in. And unlike the GFS, no major cutoff low. There is a bit of a cutoff low towards the Alps, but generally for the British Isles, no cutoff low. We are sandwiched between some lows. So we're not too far away from seeing unsettled conditions. But generally speaking, we are actually in a dry slot. And it doesn't look too bad at all. We put on the accumulated precipitation. Yes, some rain over the coming hours and coming days. But generally after sort of middle part of this week, you can see very little precipitation being added here. So GM probably in line with what the UK v, v was showing, which is high pressure building in and staying firmly in control. Now, normally we'd be raving about this and saying, oh, some pretty decent conditions are coming up for the end of April. But it's not that simple. It's not that easy, as we saw from the GFS. Small movements and deviations could mean it is a lot cooler and a lot more unsettled than we thought. Now, do you finish by looking at the latest ECMWF? Again, low pressure moving through with the coming hours and days. High pressure building in later on this week. And initially, it looks like the GM, very dry and actually pretty pleasant or warm. But progressively into the final days of April and early May, that high pressure is further westwards. And look at this, northerly winds start to develop. And we actually see low pressure coming out of the Arctic. So not only would this start to turn very unsettled with some pretty deep low pressure systems there, but also would turn cold, lots of cold air wrapped in within this low pressure system, even though the upper air temperatures will rapidly warm as they head towards our latitudes. Nonetheless, it is a cold air mass, it's a cold slice of air. So it is going to be really chilly in this sort of scenario. And you can see heavy rain would be moving in, lots of showers spiraling with this low pressure system. And the temperatures would be 
cooling down accordingly. You can see maybe just back to the double digits by this point, but you can see the coldest air hasn't even arrived yet. So if we gave that another day or so, yeah, we would be very chilly indeed. So although East and West is encouraging, that's all sort of day seven, day eight, similar to the GM, it does turn for the worst beyond day 10. So it goes dry and warmish for a few days before it definitely takes a turn for the worse and goes a lot cooler and a lot more unsettled there into early May. So all three runs agreeing that high pressure blocking system is going to become more of a feature, but they all do it in a slightly different way, which does have some real contrasting impacts at the surface. Now, do finish by looking at the latest ensembles, the latest GFS. You see, generally speaking, over the next couple of weeks, we're hovering in and around average, more below average over the next few days, and then perhaps more above average towards the end of April and early May. There's a few more precipitation spikes appearing there, so again, still a bit of a battle between those drier and those wetter runs. But you can see nothing too much deviating from average. So even when we say cool, cold, warm, you know, we aren't talking about anything too out of the ordinary. But definitely a possibility of something a bit warmer and drier there. End of April favoured from the GFS here. But I must say, not set in stone at all. And finally, if we compare it to the latest ECMWF, broadly very similar. Next week to 10 days, average to below average, a big clustering there as we progress towards the 26th, 27th. Later on this week, some cold air masses mixing in, probably coming in from the northeast. Again, nothing too remarkable, just a dry and cold air mass, probably a little bit more frosty. Um, the UKV was showing some frost appearing towards Friday, so that's in line with some of these ECMWF ensembles. And then progressively into the longer range, lots of deviation there from the mean, but nothing too extreme. No exceptionally cold runs, no exceptionally warm runs. So we're not expecting anything, you know, remarkable, but definitely anything in that sort of range is still a possibility. So anyone saying looking fine and dry towards the end of April and early May, that is an option. Perhaps you could even argue a favoured option, but it's not telling the full story. There is lots of outcomes possible here. Uh, and it would be Sod's Law that all the models start showing dry and warm. And then that one or two runs that shows a bit of a cutoff low does come to fruition. And that is what we start to see. So I have to wait and see exactly how this does uh, start to develop. But at least for the next week, we are going to see a whole array of conditions. There will be some sunny and warm afternoons some pleasant conditions at times but we are going to see a lot of cool cold conditions potentially later on in the week with some frosts and generally daytime temperatures average to below average and we are going to see some quite heavy rain especially in the west and the south over the next 48 to 72 hours so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon